data governance is a hot topic these days. It's actually been a topic my whole career within business intelligence and data warehousing. Uh, questions related to data governance have come up a lot. I've built some data quality systems, which to some extent tie into data governance. It may or may not be a part of the solution for you. I've written up a bunch of Excel-based uh, business glossaries where we take these key terms we use and we try to say what it really means here, some information about how we really calculate it, especially if it's reporting that's going to go to like you know Wall Street or public facing. You got to make sure you lock down those definitions, lock down what's being counted and what isn't, and make that very clear both internally and then externally in some cases. And so these are pieces of data governance. I guess I should also mention that data lineage about how data flows through the system is a common one that people want to know about. And then just any other just cataloging of your data to be able to see what all exists, uh, add some different documentation around why it exists, who's using it, which usually takes a bit of a, a personal touch that you can't just automate away all of that stuff. Uh, and things like, um, you know, where's sensitive data live and things like that to, to meet compliance needs. So these are just some of the things that get tied into data governance. And so I'm going to talk today about how I take something like Synapse Analytics, which is a, a platform I talk a lot about within Azure to do, do all sorts of analytics with quite a few different ways of working with your data included within Synapse Analytics. How do I take that and tie that data into Microsoft Purview and start to get it cataloged, uh, start to get the automated classification and things that come with Purview, get that done. And then uh, I'll kind of leave you hanging and let you go from there on how do I then go add my own definitions and uh, tie this all together and make sure it's visible to the right users and uh, things of that nature that are going to come along with any sort of data cataloging system. Now I'm going to put links in the description to give you more about the concepts and capabilities that Purview offers. I'm not going to cover all that today. This is as much as I'm going to say about what it does really, besides what's relevant to what we do in the rest of the session. So let's dive into this video and see how do I connect Azure Synapse Analytics to my Microsoft Purview account. Okay, here we are uh, within Purview. So I basically just went through the UI and created this very basic uh, Microsoft Purview resource. And from there we have, um, I, I guess a few options of what we can do. Let's just focus on what we need to do to connect Synapse. So we wanna go to the governance portal, which is, if you're used to Synapse, it's kind of like your studio. It's your, your workspace for actually getting things done within Purview. Okay, now that we're within here, rather than give you a big overview of it, let's just go straight to what we need. So um, we have, let's get the name showing for us. We have a data catalog and we have a data map, as well as some useful um, preview features, including data share, which I, <laughs> I don't think I had uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, so um, for data catalog, we can see uh, this is where we'll come back to see what data exists by uh, collection, which is just a grouping of things within Purview, by source type, which is about what data source it's coming from, where we can add business glossary. All those things are under data catalog, but first we need to get some things into the catalog, right? And that's a lot of what the data map's about. The data map's about what sources are tied into this Purview account uh, and um, some grouping around them. And then how do I set up scans? How do I go out and, and look for what's there within the resources I've connected and pull that metadata back in and, and start to, to build out my data map, which then feeds into my data catalog and really enables a lot of your capabilities within Purview. All right, that's kind of my, my overview knowledge you need to get going. So what we're gonna do, go to sources and register a new data source. Uh, we'll just stick with kind of default collections and things right now. Uh, quite a few ways to pull this off. Thankfully, I have Synapse Analytics right here at the top, so I can just do that. You can probably figure out that searching will also get you to the same spot. So if I come down and choose Continue, uh, now I can tell it a name that I want to use. I'd say, you know, maybe give it a little bit of a special name. I'll just say, I'll just say one for me, um, since I have no real plan of how I'm going to use this. But you may want to come up with a little bit of a naming convention for yourself. And then I need to pick a, a workspace. And so I've got a couple to choose from. Uh, once I've picked that, it knows my dedicated SQL endpoint, which I might go turn something on before this video is over. I have a serverless SQL endpoint, which I definitely have some things in to scan. And then I also uh, am choosing the collection it goes into. So this is where if I'd already said, you know, rather than just have this root collection of resources, I'm gonna say I've got my analytics platform or something like that, which is where this uh, Synapse Analytics environment belongs, then I could choose that and it'll all be grouped together uh, with other related analytics platform resources. 
So root account here, this is the collection I added it to. Here's my new thing, my new uh, data source. And now I can do scan. So I'm gonna choose what I want to, want to scan here. And the only option I have is a single dedicated SQL. I actually think that might error out for me too at this point. Um, but see this big error message right here telling me, hey, uh, you probably have serverless databases because normally you do within Synapse, but I can't see them. And so it tells me to go give the Microsoft Purview account, which is uh, this managed identity here, uh, access to uh, hit the serverless databases. And that's really what I want to do before I bother with the scan. So let's take a look at how we get our managed identity, which is created by uh, my Purview account. How do I get that managed identity added to serverless SQL and to the storage accounts that are used for the actual data I'm going to scan? So normally I try to make sure that we uh, use at least a little bit of the type of security I would, I would put in place in a real environment. In this case, I think if we wanna get things like lineage and, and those kind of things working, DB owner is required anyway. And I'm gonna be working with um, some lake databases that are replicated in a serverless SQL, which means I create them with Synapse Spark that metadata is automatically shared between Synapse Spark and Serverless SQL. And so all that to say that usually in those cases, I'm using my storage permissions to really secure what is allowed and what is not allowed. So in this case, I'm gonna give this managed identity my sysadmin access. You might wanna look a little closer at how, how tightly you can lock this down if you're doing this in production. But if you're doing a demo like me and you don't have real you know, client data in here, then sysadmin I think is okay to do for a demo and just get rid of it, remove it, to go ahead and drop this login later if you're at all concerned about it. So here I am in my uh, SQL script within Synapse and I am tied to my built-in serverless SQL. Uh, database is not that. Let's go back to master for what I'm about to do. Okay, on the master database, I'm going to create this login from external provider, which basically means this is an Azure AD account uh, and uh, my managed identity, at least every time I've seen it, is named the exact same as my, my purview account is, and so I just use that name. Just keep in mind if you like delete the purview account and then recreate it, the ID is going to change even though the name's the same, so I think that's a good time to drop and recreate it to make sure you get everything set up right. Okay, uh, I believe I've created that login correctly. Uh, now the next step is to set them up as a sysadmin. So the way we do that, and in this case, I've grabbed it from the docs, because it's been a little bit since I've had to do this, is we can go ahead and take that same account and get it added in here as a sysadmin. There we go. So now what I expect is that this account can attempt to query everything within Purview, uh, sorry, within this Synapse serverless SQL. It can read some of the metadata, but it can't actually read the data until I go and set up the storage permission. So before we move on, let's go and set up those storage permissions because we'll need those at some point as we're scanning data. Best way to do that, go find your storage account. Easiest way to do that, let's say it that way. Go find your storage account, go to the top level storage account access control and assign some permissions that way. The role that's, that should give us everything we need, uh, you can go reader if you need to, but the role that should give us everything we need, let's just go ahead and add it. I think I know what I'm doing enough to get this done is the storage blob data owner really contributors probably enough let's go contributor i don't think i want to give it owner even for a demo i think contributor will give me what i need and then i just need to go to members and say the managed identity uh, select members and then uh, there's a pretty easy way to find the one you care about especially if you only have a single purview account you can go in there and you'll see and like i said the name's the same as the account the object ID is unique for this managed identity. All right, from there, we uh, choose that we're ready to go and then assign it. Okay, so we uh, checked all the boxes. This thing is done. I've got access to serve the SQL. I've got access to storage account. Um, we could scan and get all of those resources. And then if we want to get access to the uh, dedicated SQL, we would need to do that as well. Okay, so my dedicated SQL pool's up and running, which means I can add those permissions as well. I'm going to create a new script. I deleted the old one to get it out of the way. And instead of using built-in now, I need to go find that dedicated SQL pool, and I need to go select the database on that SQL pool. Okay, so let's run our create user command, get that done. 
And then we can take that user and add them to the DB owner role. Okay, that should be what we need uh, in that case. So we added our storage account. Uh, you might have more storage accounts you need to add, of course. You might have some Azure SQL databases which have similar create user uh, type of commands to get them, get them set up properly. But in this case, I'm just doing Synapse. And so that's uh, the permissions I think we need. So if I go back and try to set up a scan, and you can change the name or leave it as is, uh, we will go and um, select that we want to do our SQL dedicated. So I bother turning that on. And you'll see here, it's trying to give me a hint that I, I probably missed something in this step. So um, it, it perhaps is related to actual permissions within purview or else it just doesn't know I went and assigned these dedicated SQL permissions. Let's go and try a scan and see what we get. Okay, it says it failed. If we view that, uh, it's saying that I need the reader role um, within Synapse, I believe. So I'm gonna go to uh, my, my resource for Synapse and go ahead and say, in this access control, let's add just the basic reader permissions and see how that goes. I find reader, I could search or I can go browse for it the way I did before. And then we can uh, review it and run it. Now these things do take a little time to propagate. We may not quite be where we need to be yet, um, but I'm not very patient. Let's try it out. Not yet, I'm gonna view the report again. Think about it for a second while I wait for that to, to get set up. Okay, that's gone through now. I didn't really change anything since um, we added them to reader on Synapse. Now let's see what happens. Okay, now we get to choose our rule set. And so there's a default rule set that you can, you can look at and try to um, you know, track everything it's doing. It's gonna try and classify data based on quite a few built-in classifications. Uh, and so, and you can add custom rules, I guess the other thing to point out as we're going here. So that's fine. Uh, you could go and just say, you know, I only care about, you know, a few of the US things, just try to limit to not over classify, I suppose. Um, but I've, you know, in the testing I've done, I've had good success just using the default. So I don't have any special use case right now. Let's go ahead and look at a uh, schedule for the, for the scan. Um, you can see quite a few options here. That's all lovely. All we need to do now is run it once. Uh, if you are running this uh, regularly, you will pay for it regularly. If you're running it a lot, you'll pay more than if you're not running it a lot. <laughs> that's the general advice there. So you're going to pay to have a data map. You're going to pay for processing that's always on for that data to store and like have that data map available. And I, I think what I was seeing is probably minimum $10 or so a day is kind of what I'm thinking it is at a very minimum. And so if you're just testing this out because you're learning like me, uh, and you have no real use for it, I'd go delete the thing and just recreate it the next time, honestly. Um, otherwise, just set yourself a reminder and don't, don't pay more than you have to. But if you're using it for a real use case, the costs are going to go up based on how much data you're storing and how many scans you do. I think those are the main things to keep an eye out for. There is the option to turn event hubs on or off so you can do some additional uh, added, um, added data sources and things like that. Uh, really good features and stuff. Just you know, turn it on if you need it and don't bother paying for it if you don't need it. All right, from this sources page, I can go in and do view details to see how my current scans are going. I can see I have one configured scan and it's saying that it's throttled, which I haven't quite experienced in the past. I will give it a little time and then check on that shortly. Let's set up another scan for a different database. So within the same synapse, I can go and choose one of my dedicated databases. Let's go ahead and use Stack Overflow. Can I choose multiple? Look at that, I can choose multiple. That's probably a better bet for this, uh, what I'm showing you. Let's pick the ones we actually care about. Um, this is a combination of Spark, Spark created databases within Serverless SQL and Serverless SQL databases. And so I may not have got all the permissions set quite right, but since I added sysadmin, I'm hoping for the best. I'll go and test my connection, make sure that basic connectivity is there, it is. And I can choose okay. Once again, we'll run once and see what happens. After it seems that the scans are complete, we can go check the data catalog and browse some of the data. 
and it may take a little time. I wouldn't expect everything to get populated right when it says the scan's done. But if you go check browse, um, you can either go by collection or source type. Let's go ahead and do collection this time. So in my browse list, I'll go ahead and choose an area, which is a fairly small table that's based on Parquet. I created it with Spark and it's automatically replicated into serverless SQL. And I can see it's got some metadata about it. It knows where it exists within my system here. And it also has collected the schema for it. Uh, depending on how we load these and things, there's other things like lineage and you can um, start to attach things that are related and, and quite a few different features once the data is scanned and, and put into purview. And that'll be you know topic for other posts and other uh, videos. So that's our look at uh, connecting Azure Synapse to purview. Hopefully I gave you enough description of what's going on that you can kind of follow that and go do your own thing with it. Uh, as you get you know more fine grained on permissions, I think there's a little bit more reading up to do to make sure you get those set how you want them for the long term. Uh, and, but it's really cool that we can use that managed identity within Azure. But you can also then, if you're going to query something else like a, a Oracle database somewhere or a Snowflake database, you can go and when you run the scan, it'll give you a place to set those, those permissions. And then of course, networking and things come into play and you'll have to make sure you get all that configured properly. So that's a quick view of how do we get these scans going with Azure Synapse, get things into Microsoft Purview, get them cataloged, a little bit of searching the catalog. Uh, it takes a little time for that data to roll in and get completely you know, refreshed and ready to, to query in the catalog. So just give it a little time, especially the first time you do a scan, of course. And then remember to turn this stuff off, delete the uh, per Microsoft Purview environment if you're paying for this out of your own pocket and we're just trying to get started and play around. So that's what I'll be going to do now. Otherwise, subscribe to this channel to hear more about Azure Synapse, uh, different things about uh, Spark and data engineering, and I'll see you next time.